Welcome to the world of movement, where your body is destined to thrive. In the pages of Built to Move, written by the dynamic duo Kelly Starrett and Juliet Starrett, you will discover the ultimate guide to building a better, healthier, and more functional body. Whether you're a self-proclaimed couch potato or a world-class athlete, this book is designed to empower you with the knowledge and tools necessary to transform your physical well-being. Do you suffer from knee pain that hinders your daily activities? Are you constantly worried about your back every time you bend down? Does your entire body feel tired, achy, and sore? Fear not, for this summary holds the key to unlock a pain-free and energized body that can conquer any challenge life throws at it. The premise is simple yet revolutionary. Built to Move presents a collection of straightforward tests to assess your current movement capabilities and provides easy-to-follow routines that will enhance your performance. Drawing from the latest insights in mobility, sleep, and nutrition science, you will discover how to optimize your body and mind with minimal effort. Kelly Starrett and Juliet Starrett, a passionate husband and wife team, are at the forefront of the mobility, movement, and health revolution. Their previous co-authored work, the Wall Street Journal bestseller, Deskbound, captivated readers with its eye-opening revelations. Dr. Kelly Starrett, co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Becoming a Supple Leopard, and co-founder of the mobility program The Ready State, brings his expertise as a leading authority in the field. Juliet Starrett, JD, an attorney, podcaster, and entrepreneur, adds her invaluable insights to the blend. Within the pages of this summary, you will embark on a transformative journey. Each section commences with a simple test to gauge your body's current functionality. From there, the authors unveil a series of practices that can be seamlessly integrated into your daily routine, fostering improved bodily function. While some exercises and tests may provoke slight discomfort, it is important to note that they should never induce pain. Your body's signals should guide you, ensuring an enjoyable and beneficial experience. For the most effective results, consider exploring this summary in the comfort of your own home, allowing you to readily follow the instructions. So, bid farewell to pain, embrace boundless energy, and equip yourself with the ability to handle life's challenges effortlessly. The body you deserve awaits, and, built to move, will be your guiding light on this transformative path. Get ready to unlock your true potential. Chapter 1. Rediscovering the Art of Movement, the Sit and Rise Test In this chapter, we confront the undeniable truth that our sedentary lifestyles are taking a toll on our bodies. From prolonged periods of sitting at desks to constant screen time, modern life has left us stiff, sore, and in pain. However, the good news is that taking care of our bodies doesn't have to be complicated. The key lies in embracing the concept of mobility. Mobility, often discussed in the fitness industry, refers to our ability to move in the ways nature intended. To illustrate the importance of mobility, we introduce the sit and rise test. This simple movement requires standing barefoot and crossing one leg over the other, lowering oneself to the floor into a cross-legged position, and then rising back up without using hands for assistance. By starting with a score of 10 and deducting points for difficulties or imbalances, individuals can assess their mobility. Scores ranging from 3 to 6 indicate room for improvement, while 7 to 9 are considered good. Ultimately, the goal is to achieve a perfect 10. The significance of the sit and rise test lies in its correlation to overall health and longevity. We observe that young children effortlessly sit on the floor, whereas adults predominantly rely on chairs. This transition to chair sitting leads to tight hips, hamstrings, and various back and knee issues. To counteract these problems, we encourage readers to rediscover the benefits of sitting on the floor. To incorporate floor sitting into daily life, we suggest various positions such as cross-legged, the 90-90ths position with bent knees, or stretching one or both legs. The key is to find what feels comfortable and to vary positions regularly. As a new goal, we challenge readers to spend 30 minutes every day sitting on the floor. After a week of consistent practice, individuals should retake the sit and rise test. The transformation and improvement in mobility will be evident. By embracing the art of movement and prioritizing mobility, 
readers can pave the way for a healthier and more vibrant life. Chapter 2. Breathe Well, Move Well, Unleashing the Power of Conscious Breathing. In this chapter, we delve into the wisdom behind our parents' advice to avoid slouching on chairs. While the aesthetic reasons for sitting upright are valid, there is a deeper connection between posture and optimal breathing. Understanding the correlation between breathing and movement becomes crucial for enhancing our overall well-being. A fundamental question to ask ourselves during any physical activity is whether we can breathe well in a particular position. Breathing well entails three key elements. First, it involves breathing spaciously, allowing the expansion of the belly, chest, and ribs during inhalation. Secondly, it emphasizes breathing through the nose, even during exercise, as mouth breathing has been associated with various health problems. Nose breathing enhances lung capacity and endurance. Lastly, breathing slowly activates the parasympathetic nervous system, promoting rest and relaxation. To assess our breath capacity and CO2 tolerance level, we introduce the breath hold or bolt test. This test measures how long we can comfortably hold our breath after a normal exhale. The longer we can hold our breath, the higher our CO2 tolerance, which correlates to improved oxygen utilization and increased energy levels. Ideally, a score of 30 to 40 seconds is optimal, while a score below 10 indicates the need to prioritize breathwork. To begin the journey towards conscious breathing, we emphasize the importance of awareness. Simply becoming mindful of our breathing patterns can initiate significant changes. Remembering the parameters of spaciousness, slowness, and nose breathing sets the foundation for improved breath control. In addition, incorporating a short breathing routine into our mornings can have transformative effects. By sitting or lying on the floor, we can practice expansive, slow nose breathing, accompanied by intentional sounds or hums during the exhale. Starting with two minutes and gradually working up to three to five rounds, this routine not only enhances breath awareness but also serves as a meditation practice. By embracing the power of conscious breathing, readers can unlock the potential for improved movement, enhanced oxygen utilization, and increased energy levels. Breathing well becomes a catalyst for holistic well-being, allowing individuals to experience a profound shift in their overall vitality and quality of life. Chapter 3. Unleashing the Power of Hip Extension, the Couch Test In this chapter, we uncover the detrimental effects of prolonged sitting on our overall movement capabilities. Not only does excessive sitting restrict our opportunities for physical activity, but it also limits our hip extension, a crucial movement for various daily tasks. Recognizing the importance of opening up our hips, we delve into the practices that can help restore optimal hip extension. Our sedentary culture has led to widespread hip flexion, as sitting positions our torso and legs at a 90-degree angle, keeping our hips in a flexed state. However, our bodies are designed to experience both hip flexion and hip extension. Hip extension, which involves kicking the leg back, is essential for activities such as walking, throwing, and getting up and down from the floor. To assess and improve hip extension, we introduce the couch test. This test requires a small area of clear wall and floor space, as well as a cushion for knee protection. Engaging the glutes is essential for maintaining proper hip positioning throughout the test. Step 1 of the couch test involves positioning oneself on all fours with toes touching the wall. One knee is placed on the cushion at the intersection of the wall and floor, with the shin resting against the wall and toes pointing down. The other knee remains on the ground, and hands are placed on the floor. Step 2 aims to raise the free knee and place the foot on the ground while keeping the other knee at the floor wall intersection. Step 3 challenges individuals to fully raise their torso upright. Achieving this position without significant discomfort indicates healthy hip extension. If an individual struggles to progress beyond step 1 or 2, there is an opportunity to unlock full hip mobility. In such cases, the test can be modified by performing it on a couch. One knee is placed on the couch seat while the other foot remains on the floor. The couch test serves as both an assessment and a remedy for hip extension limitations. To improve hip extension, we introduce the couch stretch, where individuals hold the same positions for extended periods, gradually working up to 3 to 5 minutes. 
Throughout the stretch, deep breathing and glute engagement are emphasized. By dedicating attention to hip extension and incorporating the couch test and couch stretch into daily routines, readers can unlock the potential for enhanced hip mobility and overall movement capabilities. Restoring hip extension paves the way for increased functionality, allowing individuals to move with ease and perform daily tasks with greater efficiency and comfort. Chapter 4. Rise and Walk. Embracing the Power of Movement. In this chapter, we highlight the detrimental effects of prolonged sitting and emphasize the importance of incorporating more movement into our daily lives. Sitting for extended periods has been linked to numerous health risks, making it crucial to limit sitting time to no more than 30 minutes at a stretch. To counteract the negative impact of sitting, we introduce the benefits of walking. Walking is associated with reduced risks of obesity, diabetes, heart diseases, depression, anxiety, and certain cancers. It not only strengthens joints and bones but also improves circulation, sleep, mood, and memory. Surprisingly, walking 8,000 steps a day burns twice as many calories as running three times a week. To gauge our current level of physical activity, we propose a simple test, counting our steps using a phone or pedometer for three consecutive days. Taking the average of these three days gives us an idea of our daily step count. While our hunter-gatherer ancestors walked an estimated 12,000 to 17,000 steps a day, a realistic and honorable goal for most individuals is to strive for 8,000 to 10,000 steps daily. Quantity and consistency are key when it comes to achieving this step goal. However, we should also consider the quality of our walking technique. Paying attention to foot position is crucial, ensuring that our ankles align directly above our heels rather than veering to the sides. Maintaining a proper arch between the ball and heel of the foot optimizes foot mechanics, providing a spring-like effect to our steps. Improving foot mechanics can be accomplished by selecting the flattest shoes possible or even going barefoot whenever feasible. The rest of our walking routine can be tailored to fit our lifestyle, whether it's a leisurely stroll in the park, walking our kids to school, or even engaging in a phone conversation while walking. Additionally, incorporating nose breathing during walks can further enhance the benefits of this simple yet impactful exercise. By acknowledging the dangers of excessive sitting and embracing the power of walking, readers can prioritize movement as a means to improve their overall well-being. By setting step goals, maintaining proper foot mechanics, and infusing walking into their daily routines, individuals can experience a wide array of physical, mental, and emotional benefits. Walking becomes a transformative practice that leads to a healthier, more energized, and fulfilling life. Chapter 5 Fueling Your Movement, The Power of Nutrition This chapter addresses the complex relationship people have with food and introduces a transformative approach to viewing it as fuel for the body. By understanding the impact of daily food intake on muscles, tendons, cartilage, bones, and overall movement, readers can begin to appreciate the importance of eating well for optimal physical performance. Eating well is not about adhering to a specific diet, rather, it revolves around two essential components, protein and micronutrients. Micronutrients, derived from unprocessed fruits and vegetables, encompass vital vitamins and minerals that support various bodily functions, including cell growth, immune function, nerve conduction, and muscle contraction. Equally significant is protein, which can be obtained from both animal and plant sources. Proteins provide essential amino acids necessary for building and maintaining muscles, facilitating DNA expression, and producing antibodies, among other critical functions. To assess one's nutritional intake, the chapter presents two evaluation methods. The first is the 800-gram count, where individuals track their daily consumption of unprocessed fruits and vegetables. The goal is to reach a total of 800 grams per day, regardless of whether the produce is fresh, cooked, canned, or frozen, as long as it is not fried or processed. The second evaluation involves recording the sources of protein consumed in a typical day and checking the actual protein intake. Nutrition tracker apps like MyFitnessPal can aid in this process. The recommended protein range is between 0.7 and 1 gram per pound of body weight, with even higher targets for active athletes. To meet these targets, planning ahead becomes essential. 
it is advisable to ensure a ready supply of nutritious foods for convenient access. For example, packing a snack box with a variety of veggies for work ensures a healthy option is always available. Additionally, incorporating a fistful of protein-rich foods like fish, meat, or beans on every plate helps achieve the necessary protein intake. Emphasizing a balanced and enjoyable approach, readers are encouraged to focus on nutritious foods they genuinely enjoy eating rather than subjecting themselves to overly restrictive diets. By adopting this mindset and prioritizing the consumption of wholesome and nourishing meals, individuals can fuel their bodies for optimal movement, performance, and overall well-being. Chapter 6. Unlocking the Power of Sleep, Rest Well, Move Better this chapter emphasizes the importance of sleep and debunks the notion that minimal sleep is sufficient for optimal functioning. While a small percentage of the population may function well on fewer hours, the majority of individuals require 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night. However, a significant portion of the population fails to meet even the lower end of this spectrum. Exploring the significance of sleep, the chapter highlights the critical role it plays in supporting brain function and overall bodily well-being. Research demonstrates that insufficient sleep increases the likelihood of catching a cold, while chronic sleep deprivation is associated with lower life expectancy, diabetes, obesity, depression, heart attacks, and strokes. On the contrary, well-rested individuals exhibit better performance, quicker reactions, and lower rates of injury. To assess one's sleep habits, the chapter presents a simple test, counting the actual hours of sleep, rather than the time spent in bed. If the total falls below 7 hours, it signals the need for action to improve sleep duration. In addition to quantity, sleep quality is equally important. Fitness trackers and personal assessments can be used to gauge how rested one feels after the recommended 7 to 9 hours of sleep. If consistently feeling tired despite adequate sleep duration, it suggests a need to address sleep quality. To enhance both sleep duration and quality, the chapter introduces the concept of sleep hygiene as a set of practices to prioritize and optimize sleep. Establishing a consistent sleep schedule, going to bed and waking up at the same time each day, including weekends, ensures a regulated sleep-wake cycle. Engaging in physical activity throughout the day and avoiding late-day caffeine consumption help promote a tired state conducive to winding down for sleep. Creating a sleep-friendly environment involves maintaining a quiet, cool, and dark bedroom, as well as limiting exposure to bright lights and technology a few hours before bedtime. By implementing these sleep hygiene habits, individuals can effectively communicate to their body clocks that it's time for restorative sleep. With adequate sleep, Readers are encouraged to rest well, rejuvenate their bodies, and unlock improved movement and overall well-being. Summary. We talked about a few important habits that can improve how your body feels, moves, and functions. The first one is incorporating the practice of sitting on and getting up from the floor instead of sitting on chairs for long periods. Walking is an excellent way to ensure you get your daily movement. To counter the effects of sitting, it's beneficial to stretch your hips using exercises like the couch stretch. Other practices that are vital for optimal body function include proper breathing, eating well, and getting enough sleep. These practices don't need to be complex, and you don't have to strive for perfection. The goal is simply to give your body the care it deserves with as little difficulty as possible. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And in case you want to buy the book, use the link in the description. Trust me, you won't regret it.